Hello everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm Steve and today we're going to do a product overview on, well actually let me stop for a second because I just realized there's another person in this room. <laughs> this is Leon everybody from Gigabyte. I'm sure you guys recognize him. How's it going Leon? Good, yourself? Thank you very much for coming in. I'm doing very well. Uh, so I guess we want to talk about uh, this product here which is the GA9, GAZ97X SOC Force. Board, Correct. Right? Um, so, so what do you want to start with uh, w when we talk about this motherboard? Well, definitely we can start off with the name, SOC Force. Uh, it, we just want to let everyone know this is a super overclocked motherboard, super overclocked. SOC. That's, that's what SOC represents. Excellent. So from that, you can already tell from the colors, our color scheme from our previous generation, as well as the naming that this is one of the boards in our overclocking segment. Excellent. Yeah, that's right. You guys like to stick with orange and black for the overclocking orange boards, Orange and right? black. There you go. Awesome. So I noticed that we have several different things on this board. Maybe I should just pull this back a little bit so I can take a, a closer look sure. at it. Uh, so, all right. So we got the orange and black. We've got a couple of heat sinks here and here over the Z97 chipset. Uh, we're looking at uh, four different PCIe full-length uh, uh, cards, but actually each one of them is probably set to a different, uh, different lane, right. lane speed, right? But uh, in this particular case, we can talk about really high-level overview, four-way crossfire support, right? right. And uh, two-way SLI support Correct. for NVIDIA cards. Excellent. Um, I think you actually told me there was something really special about this motherboard, and that's the fact that you have surface-mounted DIMM slots. Can right. we start with that? Yeah, so definitely, if you actually look at the back of the board, where, where usually you would see the DIMM slots on the front, you can see that it's actually smooth. Unlike how all of these soldered tips are, if you actually check out other board manufacturers or some of the other boards, you can actually see that they're, they're soldered on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we found that having surface-mounted DIMM slots, it provides for better transmission, better signaling, and we've, we've actually been able to actually break a lot of records this time around with our Z97 motherboards. That's right, over in Computex, uh, you guys were nailing a lot of stuff. Right, and not only on our overclocked motherboards, you can actually find some more records even on our mainstream, our performance line, or even our gaming lines. That's a really good point, actually. Um, if you guys want to see uh, other videos just like this one, we're going to have a whole slew that are going to be coming up on our YouTube channel, so stay tuned for those. Right. Um, so in terms of uh, componentry and just the board itself, uh, how do you want to how do you want to approach this? Well, let's Oops. just give everyone a quick overview. That's what we want to do. We want to let everyone know the different features that we have on this board, uh, unique to Gigabyte. So starting from the top, since we're already at the dim slots, you can actually see there's actually two CPU fan headers. So there's a CPU fan and there's a CPU optional. With our overclocked motherboards, sometimes you want to use something more more advanced, more effective than air cooling. You might want to use liquid cooling, custom liquid cooling, and this is where this optional fan header comes in. If you're using liquid cooling, you need something for the pump, but at the same time, your radiator needs to be cooled too, so then you would also have a fan for your radiator, and this will actually cover both the radiator and the pump. The Eliminate, radiator, fan, radiator fans. Right. right. Eliminating a need for for using a CPU, uh, another system fan header. Especially if you want PDM support for that particular, for, for the CPU itself. So when it's heating up, cooling, right. it needs to have a little bit more cooling, it's gonna be able to use that uh, to the fans to cool down the radiator, yes. cool down the liquid, and cool down the CPU. Yes. Excellent. All right. What hit next. So moving over, you see we do have the debug. We have some, uh, some voltage read points right here. We actually include it in the box. So you, if you have a multimeter, you have the connector, you just have to plug that in right there. You also see a lot of buttons right here to our left. Some surface mounted buttons there. Surface mounted buttons. We have switches as well. So just to go briefly over, if you guys do want some more information on any of these buttons, any of the features that you can find on this board, you can definitely check out gigabyte.us. Search for the motherboard. We just redid our site, so it should be really easy and really nice to see. I did see it earlier. It looks very nice. Yeah. Close up on everything. Give you guys an exact representation of what everything does. And it gives you a good easy. feature list. But uh, yeah. just for the time being right now, we have our power button we have you know a uh, bio switches to switch between your two bioses that we provide on our motherboard and dual bios this is something that's very exclusive on gigabyte motherboards we are also able to disable that dual bios we have direct to bios buttons we have um, OC ignition now this is a great button if you want to do water cooling if you want to do if you're a case modder you want to show off your system pushing that button allows you to keep all of your fan headers all of your uh, IRAM data, it allows you to test water cooling and even test water pumps. Fantastic. Excellent. So basically powers the board while everything is not technically running. Right. So your system OS won't be running, but all the lights, all the knickknacks will be in there. 
Excellent. Right. Okay. So uh, moving right along, what did you want to hit next on this board? So we also, if you actually move down, you also see we do have some dip switches. Now, in our previous generation, we had one set of dip switches for the PCIe lanes. Oops, oh, I got it. Don't worry about it. In the PCIe lanes. On the PCIe lanes. And those dip switches allowed you to actually enable or disable selective lanes depending on how you want to do testing, how you want to do overclocking. Well, we found that very useful. So this time around, we've actually included dip switches for the dim slots as well. Excellent. So, so that way, if you wanted to be able to shut down, you know, dim zero and one, or or any right. of the other one, actually, you probably would never want to shut down zero, but <laughs> one, two, and three. Well, sometimes you might want to be doing testing, and sometimes you only want one dim in the slot just to see if you have a RAM issue. So you mm -hmm. might shut down zero and just leave the dim slot one available, and that way you can test to see if it's actually your first dim that's the issue, or even the RAM that's the issue. So much faster to test, especially if yes. you're dealing with some, some heavy overclocking that you might be doing. I know you have an LN2 version of this board too. I know it's a totally separate video, but it just <laughs> reminds me of that. Please continue. Right, so moving on, uh, we also have right here, if you notice, we have two USB connectors. And so this is what we like to call OC Connect. Now for a lot of you guys that use this on an open test bench, you usually have the rear I.O. facing away from you. The OC Connect is a good way for you to actually plug in a USB, transfer firmware, do any file transfers, or even save records off of your system. But for those of you that actually don't do heavy overclocking, this is another thing that you can use it for. You can actually use it for um, possibly lighting in your case. You can use it for USB dongles on the interior if you don't want anything sticking out the back. And these are really good things that case modders or even people who actually like to have a clean look on their system will actually do. And something we spoke about too was just having the ability if you have maybe a, a, a a chassis that you're using at home that has pass-throughs where you actually right. have to take the USB cables, run them through the side of the, the PCIe uh, slots area, and then run it back into one of the USB ports. Instead of doing all that, just plug it straight into here and it would look so much cleaner, look yes. so much better. Uh, so you can still use chassis that maybe are a little bit limited like that, but uh, that would be good. And it's, then, a, it's a good option for every user to have. Yeah, I think I also like the idea of having it on a test bench and just having that availability in the direction facing you. Yes. I think that's probably going to be, especially doing all that coverage at GC skills booth, oh my god, <laughs> there's so many more times I'm, I'm, that this came in handy. Uh, but anyways, please continue, you want to talk about the SATA ports? Right, so SATA, especially with Z97, most of you guys already know that with Z97 there's a new feature, we've included SATA Express, and you can actually see it right here. This connection actually gives you 10 gigabits per second transfer rate, this is next generation storage options, so you'll see SATA Express on a lot of gigabyte boards as well as M.2. Okay. Excellent. And moving forward? We also have a special switch right here. This is actually a CBAT switch. Now, most of you guys are wondering, what's a CBAT switch do? Well, CBAT actually allows you to simulate a removal of your, piece, uh, of your battery. And, you know, people are going to say, well, I have clear CMOS. I, I can clear the CMOS that way. Why would I need CBAT? Well, sometimes clear CMOS doesn't do the job. You need to get in and pop your battery. So you'd have to come in, push this lever down, pop the battery out. But then at the same time, you might have graphics cards inside. And so what CBAT does is does all of that, popping the battery out, clearing the CMOS, with just a push of a button. Excellent. Yeah, I can imagine having, having a set second video card in there, an SLI or, or Crossfire, it's going to be a real problem because it's right underneath this, right next to another PCI port or PCI slot, and you're just going to have no way of getting in there aside from pulling out the card. Pushing the button obviously much faster. But yes, I, I digress. Please, Leon, inform me of more on your motherboard. <laughs> so basically for this SOC Force, this is actually um, most of the unique features we have. We're very heavy on the overclocking side. We have features made for overclocking like OC Connect. We have the CBAT buttons, we have trigger switches, and we have the DIMM slots to easily enable or disable any of the functions that you need. And you can definitely find out more about Gigabyte Motherboards on our site. If you're into overclocking, we do have another overclocking board, which is our Gigabyte Z97X SoC. Fantastic. All right, Leon, is there anything else you wanted to say before we close this video up? No, I think that's, that's mostly everything on the, this board. And if there's any other boards, definitely check out gigabyte.us. Excellent. Thank you very much, Leon, for coming in. Thank you guys also for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to other videos just like this one at youtube.com forward slash Newegg. And we will see you guys very soon.